He gave her some beta blocker. Beta blocker. It blocks all the beta huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need that. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun, dun, dun. mukbang. Woo! 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 Guys, I'm so excited because today we are going to be feasting on a Panda Express. I'm pretty sure I ordered so many things on the menu. So in front of us, we've got the lo mein. We've got Kung pao chicken. Kung pao chicken. Egg three roll. chicken egg rolls. Broccoli beef. Orange beef broccoli. chicken. This one they call it broccoli beef okay, because it's ninety percent broccoli. It's a scam. <laughs> and then we've got honey walnut shrimp. We've got cream cheese ragoons, teriyaki chicken, and this is the Angus steak, I believe, right? I Am think I wrong? So. I okay, think so. why do I look at you? Is that bad that I'm like looking at you for confirmation? I don't know. Yeah, okay, kind of... so let's get started. Ooh. Do you like Panda Express, Panda? Yeah. Is it? What's your favorite takeout? Like your favorite um fast food? Mm. Fast food? Mm-hmm. Yeah, orange Down. chicken. In and out. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. 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 Okay. Wow. What's your favorite item on this table right now? Orange chicken. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I like the this a lot. Mm. The noodles. Mm. It's so good today. Mm. Wow. How about you? I think. Mm hmm. I'm a little weird. I like all the ones that people don't love as much. Which one? What? The shrimp? No, people love the shrimp. Shrimp and this, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the most popular. Mm -hmm. I like beef broccoli. I like crab ragoons. Mm. I even I haven't tried this yet. Oh, it's good. But it tastes very like plain. Mm. What? Really plain? The teriyaki? So good. Oh, teriyaki is good. Okay. Egg roll? Mmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. You know that we are so hungry when we're all so silent. Mm. Holy cow. Kumpa chicken's good. Oh my god. Yeah, I like all the ones. I need more of this. More than the shrimp and the chicken. Really? This mm -hmm. one's so good. Cause I, yeah. Wow. Damn, kumpa chicken's good. Mmm. It's so good. <gasps> This is our first meal, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. A bit. Okay, Panda Express is always one of those places. Anytime someone is like, oh, we should get Panda. We should eat Panda. Let's order Panda Express. I'm always so against it. I'm like, no, it's not even that good. And then the minute it gets here, I'm like devouring everything. So now you like it. Mm-hmm. Is this considered like <clears throat> somewhat Chinese food? No. Not even little? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but would you guys be able to recognize it? Like if I brought Panda Express to China, would they be like, oh, that's cute. Like Americans <laughs> trying to make Chinese food. Or would they be like, what culture is this? What yeah, it would we... be like American food here. Oh, okay. Mm. Like, what is this? Never seen this in my life. Crap <laughs> record. <laughs> Today's story. It's gonna be really intense. At first, I just want you guys to know with this movie that we're talking about, nothing is as it seems. Everything's just a little bit wonky. The entire vibe, the ambiance of this movie is just a little off-putting. You just feel a little bit strange. And the minute that you think you know what's going on, mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on, right? And it's just a matter of when you are talking about therapists, you're talking about patients, you're talking about, you know, all of these things. I guess this entire movie, while you're watching it, you just have the question of, okay, who's the one that's ill here? Like, who's the one that's not seeing it the right way? What's the name? It's called Side Effects. Ooh. Uh -huh. Is it recent? 2013, I believe. Mm. So, like, kind of like what Joker experiences, like, ex like false illusion, false like imagination. Maybe, but who's false imagination? Oh. Um. Did is you watch someone... Joker? Joker? Yeah. yeah. It's so good. Hmm. Is someone lying? Is someone too paranoid? Is someone experiencing things only at night, you know? Mm hmm So the video opens up. The movie opens up, right? And you have a woman going to visit someone in jail. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. She gets processed at the visiting center, and she meets her husband in jail in the visiting room. And she seems really excited. For a woman whose husband in jail, she doesn't seem like a mean woman. She doesn't seem like she's mad about it. Like, listen, if I were visiting your ass in jail, I'd be pretty upset about it. I'd be like, what dumb shit? happened that you had to be here haha boo boo right but she seemed very supportive like the ultimate wife and so she's just kind of sitting there obviously she's not comfortable she doesn't like it but she's just trying to be supportive of him and he said are you excited for tomorrow and she's like i'm super excited and that's when you realize that this man by the name of martin is going to be released tomorrow after four years in prison now her name is emily and she says yeah i'm really excited right and so then they hug and then he says bye and she drives off back into new york city (laughs) now she goes to her boss and she says hey i'm not gonna be in tomorrow right and her Mm -hmm. boss is like oh yeah it's a big day are you excited that he's getting released and she's like yeah and she's like also like thank you so much for giving me a chance i know that just a lot has been happening and the boss is like well you didn't do anything wrong and emily the wife is like well yeah but whenever anyone hears insider trading it's like the end of the world and you're pretty much dead to them right Mm -hmm. so you find out that martin went to prison for insider trading so it's a white collar prison Uh Mm. uh-huh if he's coming out tomorrow Mm -hmm. and she's not excited she is oh she is excited but how many times did she visit him a lot okay okay Mm -hmm. I thought it was just that day. Mm-mm. But what about, is she 18? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's over 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's good. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, it's so good. Wow. Wow. The cream cheese organs are so good today. The compound is pretty good. Mm. Kind of spicy though. And so the next day, she wakes up, she spends a long time doing her makeup, putting on this new dress that she bought, and she gets into the car. Mm -hmm. Inside of the car is Martin's mother, right? Her husband's mother, the one that was sticking by him while he's in jail. And Mm -hmm. they they drive to the jail, and she's like, are you nervous? And she's like, yeah, I I bought this new dress. I feel like it looks stupid, though. And the mom's like, oh, it's okay. No, you look really pretty, right? And so it seems like they have a really, really good relationship. So you start feeling this heartwarming feeling, but the entire time, there's just something off about Emily. Like, she seems really sad. She seems like she's trying to be happy, not because Mm -hmm. she's mad or evil or anything, but she just seems depressed Mm. right and that's kind of what martin's mom is also picking up like she's obviously dealing with a lot right now and so they go to prison and she's so excited to see martin she's like jumping into his arms and he's like let's get out of here before they change their minds and they head home right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they head home and she's trying to presume with life as normal but she feels weird she doesn't know how to just kind of go back to normal you know Four years is a long time of Martin being gone and she had, you know, moved to a new place. They used to live in this fancy house in Connecticut and they had to move. She moved to a tiny apartment in New York City so that she could start working again. Mm -hmm. Back then she was just a stay at home, you know, wife. And there's just a lot of adjustments being made. So that day she goes to work and she gets into her car and she sees the parking lot. There's a parking attendant, just one who's not paying attention. And she decides maybe it's time. And so she steps on the pedal until she hits a parking lot wall and her car hits the wall and then the scene opens at a hospital now we're going to introduce a doctor by the name of dr banks dr banks is a psychiatrist and he's helping a lot of people it seems like he's really good at his job he has hospital shifts he has his own private practice where he you know has clients of his own he's like doing a lot he's doing the most and he's quite attractive it's played by jude law okay and so it seems like everybody loves him like even though like there there are patients that are just screaming and crying and there's even police officers yelling at them like sit your ass down Mm -hmm. he's like whoa what's your problem and he'll come over and he'll be able to communicate with the patients enough that they'll tell them what's wrong you know there was this man who said that the the police officer is like what are you talking about he did something illegal he wouldn't let a cab driver go Mm -hmm. like he was trying to kidnap the cab driver or take the cab or something Uh and he only speaks french and so then dr banks started speaking in french and it turns out he's haitian which they see a lot of their past loved ones which sounds crazy in america they Mm -hmm. said in the movie but in haiti it's very common once you're loved one passes you see them and they said that his dad used to be a cab driver and he felt like that was his dad 
dad, the driver, and he was just trying to talk to him a little more mm. before he drove away for the last time, you know? And so obviously the police don't understand it and they're being rough with the guy and the doctor's like, you need to chill, get out of here, right? And so it seems like he has really good relationships with his patients. And hmm. once he's done with this one, he gets a tap on the shoulder and the nurse says, you have a light head trauma, you know, in this room. Um, this is her chart, right? And he looks at it and it says that it could be a possible suicide attempt because she ran into the wall, right? Yeah. And there was a parking lot attendant. And so he opens the little curtain and it's Emily. Mm -hmm. And so she's sitting there and she's looking around and she's like, oh no, I'm fine. And she's like, no, I'm really fine. Like I just accidentally, like the car skidded. And he was saying, well, here's the thing. I kind of want to admit you into the hospital. I want to keep you under observation for a couple days because there were no skid marks. Mm. So normally when you're going fast and you're about to hit something, you hit the brakes and it'll really leave hard. skid marks. Yeah. Mm. But there was none. Mm. And so he's like, I just want to ask you up front, did you try taking your own life today? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I did for like a split second. And then I realized it was really stupid. And she's like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And he goes, I'm sorry, but I think I have to admit you. And she's like, no, listen, are you married? He's like, yes, I'm married. And she's mm -hmm. like, if you're married, how would you feel if your wife was in prison for four years and she finally got out today and you were admitted into a mental ward? Please just let me go home. I promise I'll do anything else that you want. Just, I just want to go home. Like if you need me to come to this hospital and do checkups every day, I'll come every single day. If you need me to do something, I'll just do it. And so then he was like, okay, well, because of that, I'm going to, you know, let you go. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to talk to your mother-in-law. I'm going to talk to your husband, let them know what happened. I'm also going to prescribe these antidepressants and I want you to come to my office three times a week. And so she's like, okay, that sucks, fine. But that's not a good way to, no, in the parking lot, just kind of boom. Was it a really dramatic, really, f oh, okay. Something's yeah. up. Okay, okay. I thought she's just like back into it. No. <laughs> you know what happened? She's the main character. 90% mm -hmm. It's not going to die. Mm. <laughs> 90%. Do you want her to live? Uh, yeah. Mm. He said 90%. <laughs> 90. Have you seen Game of Thrones? No. That's fine. I don't know. I just, that show just doesn't interest me. What? Like, I saw, like, ep like episode, first three Season? episodes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just, it didn't hook me. What? Yeah. They talk a lot, huh? <laughs> I just don't That's know how he feels. Like, it was confusing. I don't know what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, mm you just uh, talk a lot. Yeah. Like, no action, dude. Wow. And it's really dark. The, the show itself. The lighting is not... That's how I feel about How to Get Away with Murder. Love yeah. that show. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I turn too. up the brightness. I turn on... I turn off the lights. And I'm still like... Still I can't dark. see shit. Yeah. My eyes are really tired. Even in the daytime. Mm -hmm. That house needs more windows, Annalise Keating. Come on. Did you not look at lighting when you bought that house? <laughs> What's going on, Annalise? Sorry. I mean, your, your video is kind of dark sometimes too. I'll punch you and so at this point she's seen going into Dr. Banks office and he has this nice high-rise office with windows and she's sitting on the couch and he's talking about you know tell me how you feel blah, 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 blah. and so she says you know I've I've been depressed I've seen a psychiatrist before it never really gets better I had one when I was in Connecticut and then I moved here and then I guess I just never really thought about getting one I thought that they wouldn't help and he was like okay well what kind of medicine have you been on and she's like this and this and it didn't really work for me and so he's like okay I'm gonna prescribe this antidepressant right mm -hmm. and so she says okay and he's like so tell me about you know everything going on and she's like obviously I'm really excited that Martin's back but I'm just like kind of nervous like I don't know how life is gonna be going forward mm. he says that he met some hedge fund manager in jail and they're gonna start working together oh. and that makes me nervous and you know and mm -hmm. so the doctor is like okay well did you ever have any help like what was your therapist name from Connecticut and so mm -hmm. she's like I um, her name was Victoria Seabram right and so she's like, he's like, okay, do you mind if I get all of her notes from your sessions? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I guess not. That's fine. And so then he writes down her name and he's like, okay, and you said you took these medicines before. Okay. And so he prescribes her the new antidepressant. Mm -hmm. She goes on her merry way. And Jonathan goes to a pharmaceutical meeting, right? Where it's like a bunch of pharmacy companies that are like, hey, I have the best antidepressant on the market. You should mm -hmm. give it to your clients, your mm -hmm. patients. And he runs into none other than Victoria Sebram, right? Because it's all like in the tri state area right i believe connecticut is nearby Got it. and so he runs into her and she's like oh nice to meet you you know blah 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 and he's like i've heard of you you know one of my clients i don't know if you remember her emily and she's like blah, yeah 
Emily, right? And so he's like, what's wrong? And she's like, nothing. I'm, she lost her health insurance when she had to move away from Connecticut. And I, I never knew, she never picked up my calls. I never knew if she found a new therapist because I was a little worried for her, but I'm glad that she found you. And he's like, oh, is that so? And he's like, you know, I tried putting her on this antidepressant. And she's like, that's a good pick. I mean, that usually works with my clients. And she's like, well, I put her on these. She hated it, made her nauseous, made her sleep deprived, absolutely hated it. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, oh, you know, I, I started putting my um, one of my clients on Ablixa. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I'm sure it might be good for her if, you, if you're into it. And so then he's like, Ablixa, I feel like I've heard of that. What's Ablixa? It's an antidepressant. And so she looks into her bag and she's like, I think I might have some samples. I just went to the Ablixa booth and she looks into her bag and she goes, ah, a pen. <laughs> Go figure, right? And he's like, oh, thanks. And he takes the pen, right? And she goes, well, good luck. And she leaves, right? A pen? Yeah. Because, you know, they have booths where they give out samples. Oh. But yeah, but, you know, a pen. And so she's like, Go figure, a pen. And so she gives him the Ablixa pen and he walks away and he's like, Ablixa. And at the same time, Emily is at a subway station and she's looking around and she sees a poster of a woman who's smiling and she looks so happy. And it says, if you're deprived, contact da 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 da, try Ablixa today. And she's looking at it like, she just looks like, wow, I wish I could smile, right? And there was a police officer on the subway who's staring at her. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little weird to be so, you know, enticed by an antidepressant poster. Mm -hmm. And so she's just staring at it. And she looks around and she doesn't see anyone looking at her. She didn't see the police looking at her. And so she walks closer to the edge and to the very edge of the train station. And then suddenly she feels something push her back. And it was the police officer mm. who said, hey, not too close. And she says, oh, sorry, thank you. And he looks at her and they stare at each other for like a solid second or two. And then he walks away. And so she's taking this medication that's not a blix, so it's just a regular antidepressant. And she feels like it's not going to work for her. It's like a lot of the times these companies, from what I heard, they make the, the same. It's kind of like ibuprofen and Tylenol. Mm -hmm. And like Advil, mm -hmm. like sometimes you have like different names of it, but they're all boiled down to like the same drug. Mm -hmm. It's just this is this company's name. Like Advil itself is not like an actual drug. It's just called Advil, but I think it's called like ibuprofen. It's like their official name, you know, or something like that, right? And so she just felt like this wasn't going to work for her. And maybe that also messed with why it didn't work for her. She was yeah. having sleepless nights. Nothing was working out. She wasn't able to get excited with Martin, which was a big problem for her. And she just felt like this was ruining her life. And so then one day Martin was like, hey, listen, I got invited to a party with mm -hmm. all of our former friends in Connecticut, mm -hmm. all of these rich, you know, Wall Street dudes, and I understand if you don't want to go. And she's like, no, it's, it's better if we just, you know, get back to things as normal, right? And it's wow. weird if I don't go okay. with you. And I don't want you to go alone. And so she gets all dressed up and she looks so nervous. Yeah. And they end up at the party and everyone's just kind of looking at them weird. Like imagine you had a group of like a hundred friends and two, one of them got arrested for insider trading. Mm -hmm. You might not be like, what's happening, bitch? How you been? You might be like, oh, hey, how are you guys doing? You're how not was, um... Yeah, not because you don't like them or you think that they are, you know, mm -hmm. the black sheep, but you just don't know yeah. how to approach a casual conversation anymore mm -hmm. because you don't know what happens when someone's family gets torn up when some of them go to jail. And so everyone's just very awkward and she's looking around and everything feels so uncomfortable for her, right? And she's like, I'm going to go get a drink, right? And so she goes on over to the bar, gets a drink, and she starts drinking it and she looks in the reflection of the mirror mm -hmm. and she sees her face and she just starts crying. And one of Martin's, you know, friend's wives comes up and says, hey, are you, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And so she's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And she wipes her tears. And she's like, actually, can you grab Martin for me? And she rushes to the bathroom and she starts throwing up. And then he puts, he comes into the bathroom. And by this point, everybody knows what's going on. So it's really awkward. You're talking about a whole party where there's dinner, there's drinks, there's people in these fancy gowns. And they're all just watching as Martin carries her out of the bathroom with his blazer on her. And everyone's just like, oof, like I feel so bad, shit, you know? Yeah. But what can they do? Yeah. And so she gets escorted out of the party like that. And then the next day at work, she rushes into the bathroom again and she starts throwing up. Now this is where her boss thinks it's a little weird. So her boss walks in, knocks on the door and she says, I'm fine. And she can obviously hear her throwing up and she sees her little bag on the counter and her pill bottles there. And her boss walks over, picks it up and says, 
Oh, well, of course you're feeling sick. I was on this. It just made me feel like this 24-7. You should ask for this other thing, right? Blitz, it doesn't yeah. make you... No. Oh. It doesn't make you feel nauseous at all or anything like that. And I like so, how the bosses casually just pick up her yeah. medicine and say, yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. And so it just gets super stressful. And so mm -hmm. she ends up going back to the doctor's office and nothing's really working out. And she's like... Listen, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't know if I need to start seeing a new doctor. Like, it's just not helping. I feel like it's just making things worse. Yeah. And somehow the conversation comes up and she's like, you know, some of my coworkers, one of my coworkers named Julia, she's like taking something else, you know? And then he's like, okay, well, why don't we try Ablexa, right? So they're like, okay, Ablexa. She's like, it's new. It's like different from these. And so they get excited. She gets put on Ablexa mm -hmm. and she goes home. She goes on a date with Martin. Like, it seems like she's somewhat happy again like she doesn't seem like a, a ball of joy but it seems like it's working mm. up until that night where she woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and she starts making breakfast and martin is like what is going on it's three in the morning so he gets up out of bed and he's like emily it's three in the morning what are you doing why are you making pancakes and she's like pouring a glass of milk and she doesn't stop and so the milk overflows and he's like what the hell so he grabs the milk from her and she's like what is going on and so they end up back at Dr. Banks' office with the both of them. And yeah. Martin's getting upset. Martin's like, why the hell is she sleepwalking? And then he's like, you know, it's fine. It's normal. Has Sorry, she had problems that... with sleepwalking before? And she's like, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And so wow. he's like, we need to go back to your old drug. And she's like, I don't mind if I sleepwalk. Like, you can chain me to a bed, but I've, I've never felt as happy as I do now. Like, mm -hmm. you can't take that away from me. And she's yeah. like, whenever I'm not on Eplixa and you put me on the other drug, or before I was even on these antidepressants, I felt like there was just every day around 3 p.m., there would be this poisonous fog that would just come over me, and I can't do anything. Like, it's just like this fog, and I can't see. Like, nothing's clear. Everything's just like, I hate it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, if you are going to take me off Ablixa, I'm just going to go find another doctor that's going to put me on Ablixa. And so, you know, at this point, he's like, okay, let's try for a little bit more. Yeah. And so Martin's like rolling his eyes. He obviously doesn't really seem like he knows much about Medicine. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they go back home that night. Uh -huh. I don't get it. I feel like like so many pills, like so many drugs involved. Mhm. Mm <laughs> I feel like sleepwalking is like one of the creepiest things. No. No. It's really yeah. dangerous for the sleepwalker too. Cause they can't, they don't know what happened. Mhm. Mm is that really true? Like, can that actually happen in real life? Sleepwalking? Like actually sleepwalking and grabbing something? Mhm. Mm wow. There's people that have done some crazy shit while wow. they are sleepwalking, right? Like they would drive. Mm -hmm. no, no? Yeah. Drive? Mm-hmm. And they won't wake up? Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I wish I can like just work while I sleepwalking, you know what I mean? Wow. 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 And then when you wake wow. up, the work is done? Like, wow. 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 Yeah, I just want someone to develop something that you can like... Sleepwalk and work? Yeah. You are a workaholic. I'm like, can we just develop something where we can sleepwalk and I don't know, fucking play ghost dope or some shit, like something fun? You're like, I want to work. But we won't remember. Mm -hmm. Um. No. Okay, that's true. And so she goes home that day, and at the same time, Doctor Banks gets approached by a different company called Delexer, right? Mm -hmm. And Delexer is an antidepressant new drug, and mm -hmm. they just hit the market. And they said, "Hey, listen, we're looking for therapists that are going to prescribe this, but we're also looking for data. We want you to prescribe this to clients that you think it'll fit them well, and we want you to collect the data. Do they like it? What are their side effects? You know." every single week write it down on the charts and then send it to us obviously you have to tell the clients that you are getting paid through deluxer but we're willing to offer you fifty thousand dollars wow and so he gets excited right so he goes mm -hmm. home to this new downtown apartment that he had recently purchased with his wife deidra and their young son now deidra's son lives with them now because they're married and she had recently lost her job and she works in finance right and so she's getting really nervous for all these interviews she has upcoming she's like i need to get a job i can't believe i lost my job you know 
Mm-hmm. And there's just so much going on. You know, their son goes to this very elite private school that they have to pay for. Mm-hmm. They just got this new downtown mm-hmm. apartment they have to pay for now. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot. And so she's seemingly stressed and he's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, right? Yeah. Because I also got this. So we're going to be okay. And you're going to get that job that you have an interview for. And so then she's like, yeah, you're right. So then the next day, all of a sudden, as she's sitting in the waiting lobby at the hospital for a job interview, right? She's just yeah. sitting there and she's like, thank you, Dr. Banks, her husband, you know, for coming out. Because he gave her some beta blocker that's supposed to make her better during her interview. Beta right? blocker? Mm-hmm. So apparently... Beta, then it's like, <laughs> that's... I, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm a beta blocker. <laughs> I need that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> beta blocker. It blocks all the betas, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. Wait, so the wife is at an interview. Comes to the hospital where he works. Yeah. To get a beta blocker. But mm-hmm. do, do people know that she's her his wife? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So she's going to be alpha now. You know, and she's like, is this fucked up that I'm doing this? Uh-huh. And he's like, no, it's a beta blocker. Like, it's just going to allow yourself to be you. It's not going to change you, you know? Mm. And she's like, okay. And she's like, oh, I'm so nervous. It's between me and this guy from Citigroup or something. So mm-hmm. she's like, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. And they're talking when all of a sudden he gets a call. Yeah. He t- turns it to voicemail. And so he picks up the voicemail and he says, excuse me, right? And he's listening to it and it's Emily and she's frantic. And so then all of a sudden he's like, okay, I think this is an emergency. I might need to go. When she, the wife looks behind him and there's Emily. And so she's like, do you know her? Yeah. And he turns around and he goes, Emily, what are you doing here? And she's like, I tried calling you. I just need five minutes. Like, I tried calling you and you weren't there. And I I came to the office. I wanted to see if you were here. I just want to talk for like five minutes, please, right? And so then he's like, okay, right? And the wife looks worried. Not like, "Mm, who's that? But like worried, you know, Mm -hmm. because these are patients that need help. And her husband is a therapist. And so she's like, go, go. And so he goes and he sits down at this, like, there's a cafe nearby, right? And they're sitting together. And she's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just getting nervous all of a sudden. Like, I don't know. Like, I keep having these thoughts again. And I don't know what's going on. Like, I feel like everything was going so well. Like, I even bought this outfit for for Martin because one of the biggest problems she was having is that she wouldn't get excited to do, you know, enough the things with my aunt. Mm-hmm. And so then she pulled out this Victoria's Secret bag and she's like, I even went shopping. And then she like put it back in her bag and she's like, but I just feel weird. And he's like, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And she starts crying and she's like, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Like, I feel like my emotions are like everywhere. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay. Right. And he gives her a hug and she's like, it's okay. And she's like, I'm so sorry. This is just, I'm feeling weird. Right. And she yeah. walks away. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, well, I'll see you next week in the office. Mm -hmm. And then that night, she goes home. She's making dinner. Mm -hmm. Martin comes home. He opens the door. Mm -hmm. And he hears her in the kitchen. And he walks over. And she's holding a knife, cutting a bell pepper. Mm -hmm. And he says, Emily, you'll never guess what happened today. And she walks over to him. And he's trying to give her a hug. But she stabs him in the stomach. Repeatedly. Over and over again. But it's not like angry. It's just... She's sleepwalking. Oh my god. And then the police arrive. Mm Because he was struggling. There was a lot of calls. They live in an apartment. And she is now being interviewed by the police on her own couch. And -hmm. they ask her, did someone break in? She says, no. And she looks shocked. Mm. And she has blood all over the bottom of her feet. So Mm -hmm. she knows (laughs) she's probably the one that did it. Mm -hmm. They're like, did you do anything? She's like, I don't remember. They're like, Mm -hmm. did you let anyone in? She's Mm -hmm. like, I don't think so. No, I was the only one here. You know, and the police are like, okay, well, she's going away for a long time. She just admitted to murder, right? Mm -hmm. So they arrest her. They put her in jail. And she just kept asking for Dr. Banks. She doesn't know anyone else. She doesn't know how to call an an attorney. This was the other person that she was seeing a lot. So she asked for Dr. Banks. And Dr. Banks sits down with the police before he's allowed to see her. And they say, listen, has she been talking about murdering her husband? And he's like, what are you talking about? No. And then the police are like, well, she did it. So are you going to cooperate with us? And he's like, no, this is her. Like this, she's not, she probably had no idea what she was doing. I think she was probably sleepwalking. She's had instances of sleepwalking before and the police are like oh yeah sleepwalking murdering in the sleepwalking now a wife murders her husband but she was sleepwalking 
right? And the police are not believing it. And he's like, listen, I am her psychiatrist. I would know. I do feel like she was sleepwalking. There's no, she, she had no intent. There was no reason for her to even murder Martin. There's no life insurance policy, mm-hmm. you know? The police are like, yeah, mm-hmm. we looked into it too. There is no life insurance policy, you know? And it's just, yeah. it's weird. And so he's like, no, I'm sure it's sleepwalking. And the police go, listen, someone's going down for this, whether it's Emily for being a murderer or you because she is a victim of her medicine and her therapy. So why don't Uh you decide whose side you're on? Because we would love to work with you for our trial. So what happens is the prosecutor, the police's side, and Emily's side, they usually bring in, in situations like this, a psychiatrist Mm -hmm. to talk about it, right? And they want her psychiatrist to be on the police side because that makes their case so much easier. And so he says, okay, let me think about it. And as he's walking away from the police station, he gets a call and he ends up at a diner where he's meeting with Emily's lawyer. Okay. And so she's sitting down and she's showing him all the proof of all of these other people who sleepwalked and murdered and they got acquitted. They weren't charged guilty, right? Wow. Because the whole point of murder is that there's intent. Uh-huh. If you have no idea what you're doing, you're not going to be free. You're probably going to be in a psychiatric ward, but uh-huh. at least you won't be in jail for yeah. something you didn't even know you were doing. Something you didn't even think you were going to do yeah. or wanted to do. And so she's like, I would love if you could, you know, be on our side for the trial. And he's like, I mean, obviously, you know, that the police asked me to it's a difficult decision for me to make and he was like well does she have at least character witnesses and the lawyer was like yeah i mean we have martin's mother who actually hired me so you know obviously they have a really good relationship because martin is the husband that she just murdered Mm -hmm. while sleepwalking and her mom got her an attorney right and so she's like just let me know but let me know asap and so she walks away from the diner now the funeral happens all of these things happen and martin's mom (laughs) finds her way into the prison to visit emily and they're sitting there and martin's mom isn't embracing her and hugging her and being so happy she's just saying i don't understand i just need to know why it happened Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so she's like i don't know either and she's like what do you mean you don't know you don't remember anything while you're sleepwalking like nothing Mm -hmm. she's like i wish i could you know if i would do any to trade spots with Martin right now. I would do anything, is what Emily's saying, you know? Wow. And she goes, please just read this. And so she gives her a letter, mm-hmm. and Martin's mom takes it and she reads it. And then suddenly, because this is a high profile case, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sleepwalking as the defense, Martin's mom is thrust into the news cycle. She's being interviewed by the top news stations. And every single news station, she's reading the letter. What and she it? said, It's crazy how some people go to doctors for help and they'll prescribe you medicine that there's really not that many results for. And you become a victim of your medicine and you don't know what you're doing. And there might be people out there taking a Blixa because they want to cure depression, but they might be doing other things while under it. Is that the letter? Yeah, like slamming a Blixa. Cause she wrote that. Because it's like all sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't sleepwalking before a Blixa. Yeah. And it's not even just regular sleepwalking where you just like walk to the kitchen and pour milk like, sh- you know. Yeah. It's like very bad sleepwalking. Yeah. And so at this point, you know, Dr. Banks is reading the news, watching the news. And he's getting nervous because a lot of the talk show hosts, a lot of the news anchors, they're saying, what kind of doctor would prescribe Elixa? Mm. Elixa isn't even like that well tested yet. Yeah, it's FDA approved, but it's still new. It's still not one of the most trusted antidepressants. Why would they just prescribe a Blixa? Yeah. And so, you know, the question became of where's the doctor? And so obviously all the press gets into Dr. Banks's life, you know. His yeah. wife is so confused. He ends up, you know, losing his partnership. So at his partnership, there's three psychiatrists. And they say, listen, all of our clients are dropping us because of you. It's time for you to find a different space to practice. Yeah. And so he's getting stressed out. He's packing his boxes, you know. He doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And one of his partners says, listen, I didn't tell anyone about this, but you better believe that it's probably going to get out soon. And he says, I received a letter from the parents of someone you treated not too long ago. And her name was Allison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it said that you and Allison had an affair. What? And that you forced Allison to do a lot of things. And then Allison ended up committing suicide. And her parents blame you for it. Mm -hmm. Damn, this doctor is in all sorts of... And Dr. Banks is like, no, that's not true. And he's like, I'm just saying, just just go find a cheaper space and go work on yourself. Because if the letter came to me, the letter is going to other people. And so he goes home and he sits his wife down and he says, listen, I need to tell you about something. And he shows her the letter. And obviously she's mad. She's Mm -hmm. like, what the fuck? 
why would you that's illegal that's disgusting if you're taking advantage of your patients you know yeah and he's like but that's the thing it's not true allison was a paranoid schizophrenic she stalked me and she felt like we were having a relationship none of these things ever happened and one day when she kept trying to like make advances on me i denied it and she took her life and her parents blame me but i assure you none of this happened i would never do this so who do you believe in this case right and so the wife is like what and she's like sometimes when people are sick they make things up okay and huh. so she's like okay right and she seems skeptical and so he goes about the rest of his day packing his office because he just got kicked out and he starts packing and he sees that Ablixa pen and he goes why is it my fault right it should be Ablixa's fault and so he grabs the Ablixa pen and he starts searching online yeah Ablixa Ablixa and he scrolls and scrolls and he sees an article called sleepwalking a dangerous side effect of Ablixa and it's a research article written by other psychiatrists mm -hmm. yeah and so he clicks on it and it's written by Victoria Seabrook who is the is? woman who gave him the Ablixa pen her former psychiatrist. She knew about this. And so she's so confused. <gasps> and so he takes the pen, he packs his bags, goes to Connecticut, shows up at her office, and she sits him down. And he's like, well, why didn't you tell me you wrote the article? And yeah. she goes, what are you talking about? We were talking about patients. We weren't talking about our resumes. Do you want me to list off all the other articles that I've written? And he's looking at her very skeptical. And she's like, I don't understand what's going on. And he's like, why didn't you tell me about her sleepwalking? Uh -huh. And she's like, I tell you about her sleepwalking? I didn't know. What are yeah. you talking about? Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of looking at her. And then he goes, okay, fine. It was nice talking to you. And he leaves. Now, this is when Dr. Banks starts to lose his mind a little bit because immediately after he leaves Connecticut, he gets another call from Delexer, the company that he was working for, doing uh -huh. the trials for. Yeah. And he shows up to meet one of the representatives at a bar and she says, I'm sorry, but you know, we can't further our contract with you. And he's like, no, please, like I can do this study anonymously, just let it go. And she's like, I can't, you know. And so they're just having a regular conversation and he's like, okay, fine, I agree. You know, it's fine, it's fine. And I think maybe there was like some sort of stock option that they had. And so she goes, at least on the bright side, our stocks are shooting through the roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he looks at her and he goes, your stocks are shooting through the roof? And she goes, yeah, does that matter? And he goes, no. And he runs away. And so at this point, everything's getting really creepy for him, right? You see that he's kind of trying to put random things together. There's something about stocks that freaks him out. The whole article with Victoria freaks him out. And so he decides to investigate by going to Emily's workplace. <laughs> and so he shows up at Emily's workplace and he's looking around and he talks to the boss and she says, oh yeah, it's just, it's kind of a crazy thing, blah, 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 blah. And she says, I was depressed once. It felt like a poisonous fog. And he's like, what? What did you just say? And she goes, a poisonous fog yeah. that just invades your mind. Uh huh. And he's like, that's the same word, yeah. verbiage. And so he goes, that's a very interesting way of describing mm. it. Where'd you hear that? And she goes, oh, it's one of the books that we did a graphic design for. And so he's like, it's one of the books. And she's like, yeah, really good read. If you should, if you want to read it, it's really good. Mm. So he's like, huh, okay, that's very interesting. He goes outside, right? Because he's leaving the office now. He didn't really get much information other than the poisonous fog thing. Yeah. And so he walks outside and he sees on the TV something playing. And it's playing an ad of wearing your seatbelt. And it shows a crash test of something hitting a wall with the seatbelt on and the airbag deploys and their head gets saved by the airbag. And so he looks at that and he stays there for a second and he walks back into the office yeah. and he taps each coworker on the back and says, are you Julia? Are you Julia? Are you Julia? And everyone's like, no, no, no. And then the boss comes back out and goes, I'm sorry, did you need something else? Yeah. And he goes, oh yeah, I was just was, thought I'd be interested. I know that Emily was close to a woman by the name of Julia that worked here. Uh huh. She goes, oh, we never had a Julia that worked here. What? So he decides to get into the car 
Yeah. And he rushes on over to the parking lot area where yeah. she had crashed her car the night that they met. Uh-huh. Right. And he finds the parking attendant and says, were you here that day mm-hmm. that she was there? Mm-hmm. And he said, yes, I was. And he says, tell me about that day. And he tells everything. And so he goes, yeah, so then I opened the door, I pushed down the airbag, and I took off her seatbelt, and I pulled her out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he goes, you took off her seatbelt? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I took off her seatbelt. Uh-huh. And she goes, you're 100% certain she was wearing a seatbelt. And he goes, uh-huh. yeah, I'm 100% certain she was wearing a seatbelt. Mm. So then he goes, okay, thank you. So he rushes back into his car, rushes all the way back home, and he starts putting up, you know, all the newspaper clippings of freaking Emily's, you know, sleepwalking murder, a blix of this, a blix of that. He starts looking at the stock prices of a blix versus Delexer and all Emily? of these things. Emily's the wife. And so the doctor's doing that when the wife of the doctor, uh-huh. Deidre, <laughs> okay. he, she walks in and she's pissed off. Uh-huh. And he goes, what's wrong? I've got this solved. I'm about to clear my name. Mm-hmm. And she goes, no, you're not. And she slams down pictures onto the ground. And he picks it up. Mm-hmm. And it's pictures of him mm-hmm. and Emily at that cafe that day. And she's pulling something out of a Victoria's Secret bag. Oh, my god! And then putting it in. And then they're hugging. It looks like he had gifted her something from Victoria's Secret. Oh my gosh. And this mixed with Allison decided, hey, this guy is creepy. And so she decided that she was going to divorce him. She says, I can't do this anymore and I don't want my son around you. Uh And so she leaves and he's just so confused. Somebody framing this on him. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, trial had passed and the movie's really not about the trial. And she was deemed, I think like they agreed to a not guilty by reason of insanity, which Mm -hmm. happens like I believe 1% of the cases. And so she had to go to a psychiatric ward until a psychiatrist said that she was healthy enough to go back to regular living. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to jail. And so she's in the psychiatric ward and he goes to visit her. And he starts asking her some questions. Mm -hmm. She's really confused, right? He's like, so I went to your workplace. Uh She's like, yeah. And he's like, there's no Julia there. And she's like, huh? And he's like, at your ad agency. She's like, oh, no, Julia's from the old bar that I used to work with. And we catch up all the time. And so he's like, oh. So she's like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. So Julia works at the bar, not your ad agency. And she's like, yeah, at the bar. What has she ever said about Julia? Julia recommended that she get on some new drug. And so he's like, okay, interesting. And so then at this point, you know, he also says, oh, also, how's your depression? I remember you said it was like a poisonous fog Mm -hmm. that just infiltrated your brain every day. How's that going? And she goes, I don't even feel it anymore. You know, I feel really good now. I feel good. It's weird. And he's like, oh, well, I just was so interested. Those are such unique words. How did you, how did you find the description of like a poisonous fog, you know? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I don't know. I mean, Martin and I used to always go boating in Connecticut when it was foggy. Mm -hmm. And I probably like read it somewhere or watched it on some TV show. I don't don't know. I don't know where I got it from. And so he's like, huh, very interesting. And he leaves the office. And she says, wait, before you go, next time, do you mind staying a little longer? I don't really have anyone else that visits me. And this is kind of like the only thing I can look forward to. Okay. So he says, "Mm -hmm, sure, fine. And he leaves. So she has no idea that his life is falling apart. And so the next time he visits, he puts his briefcase down and it looks like he hasn't slept in days. And he pulls out a video recorder, sets it up on a tripod, starts recording her, and he has this little medicine. He says, listen, I know how to get you out of the psychiatric ward quicker. And she says, how? And he goes, this is what's called like this drug, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently it's supposed to make humans very loose Mm. it's supposed to make you feel comfortable and drowsy just enough it's like the closest that we have gotten to like a truth serum and so i'm going to put it in you you're going to feel very drowsy and i'm going to ask you questions and it's statistically found that most people can't lie while they're under this and so she's like okay and then he goes and then she's like and then what she goes so i'm going to inject you with it i'm going to ask you some questions and obviously you're going to tell the truth because people have a hard time believing that you don't remember anything you're going to tell the truth that you don't remember anything and then you'll probably pass out from the drug Uh so she's like uh what if i don't want to Uh he's like no this is the fastest way out of this ward and so she's like okay and so he injects her with the drug yeah 
and the room starts, you know, she's sitting there kind of swaying. And he says, okay, what's your name? And she's like, Emily Taylor. And he's like, how old are you? She answers everything. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, did you want to kill Martin? And everything's being recorded. Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, I didn't. And he goes, are you sure? Did you, were you mad about something? Were you mad at Martin for something? Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, I loved him. And so he goes, Did, is there anything you hated about him? And she goes, no, I loved everything about mm -hmm. him. And he's like, tell me more. Are you sure you don't remember? She goes, I don't remember. And she passes out. And so then he brings this video recorder and he goes to the main doctor that works at the psychiatric ward, right? Yeah. And he says, listen, you need to arrest her right now. And shows the footage. And the doctor is looking at him and goes, okay. I need you to you're crazy that's exactly what she told you know the jury that's exactly what she told the lawyer that's exactly what she told us what does this prove that you're just torturing this woman that was deemed not guilty by the court system yeah and so he drops the little medicine on his desk and goes listen this is water i injected her with saline which is why would she pass out which is what it's just oh. like just like nothing it's like a solution like eye drops or something oh so he, she acted yeah why would she pass out why would she put on a show like this mm. and so then he's like i still need you to delete the footage and he goes what are you talking about and he goes we have double jeopardy in this country meaning that she can never be tried again for martin's murder oh. and also you sound crazy you sound like someone who just wants to clear your name and will say anything to do it and i'm telling you right now this is not a good look for you you get it she won let it go move on with your life and so he gets upset and he goes, well, check her bank accounts. She probably did some weird shit. Her, her husband knew everything about insider <gasps> trading and the stocks are oh going up. Oh my gosh. And she's like, you sound crazy. We've kept a look on every single bank account that they've ever had. Nothing. There's not even a life insurance policy. This girl has lost everything. The stock was going up. Yeah. And so he's like, no, I'm telling you something's not right here. Yeah. And so he leaves. And as he leaves, he's checking his voicemail and he has a voicemail from the woman by the name of Victoria who calls and they meet at a diner and she says, listen, by all everyone knows right now, you are manipulating your patients after you mishandle their drugs. Why don't we join forces? We can start our own partnership together, oh our own practice, God. and all your life's worries will go away. And he's like, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. And she goes, why don't you just accept this partnership and let me take over Emily's case? Besides, I knew her much longer than you did and I probably was a much better doctor than you. And so he's recording all of this. And so they get into a little bit of a fight and it seems like she's guilty, but he doesn't know what she's guilty of, right? Mm -hmm. So she never admitted to being guilty of anything, but just feels it. Yeah. So he walks on over back to the psychiatric ward, sits down with Emily and says, Victoria told me everything and Emily looks at him and goes what and she looks shocked and she goes I don't want to talk to you and so she stops talking mm -hmm. he visits every single day the next day he visits he grabs her hand uh -huh. takes her to this little room uh -huh. where they're doing shock therapy on a woman oh my gosh and he's explaining all of the horrendous side effects of shock therapy yeah. and he says you're gonna start shock therapy tomorrow and she's like, why? Uh -huh. And he goes, well, Victoria wanted me to do it. Uh -huh. And she goes, what? And she goes, yeah, I mean, it's one of the main mm -hmm. things of shock therapy is you lose your memory. Uh -huh. So maybe you won't remember that you have millions of dollars that you need to collect once you're out from <sighs> Julia. And she goes, Julia, Julia wouldn't do this. And she goes, he's like, are you sure? Because I'm pretty expensive and I'm pretty sure she's taking that from your share. And so she sits down and she confesses everything to him. I still don't know who Julia is, though. Oh, Victoria. Julia's a coworker. Sorry. Oh, okay. And so she says, Victoria wanted me to do this, right? Uh -huh. And so she's like, what? And so she sits down and tells him everything. She says that in Connecticut, Martin was insider trading. She knew it. She told him to stop. He wouldn't stop. And then one day at a family barbecue, he was arrested. And then her life as she knew it was falling apart. Yeah. Everything was falling apart. They lost their house. They lost everything everything yeah she went to go see victoria her psychiatrist in connecticut yeah. and they started talking and talking and then she found out that she was pregnant mm -hmm. and from the stress of everything she was so sad and her baby didn't want to be inside a sad person and so her baby left and she got even more sad and she was mad she was really mad and victoria victoria had secrets too victoria was very interesting she 
was a therapist, but she wasn't living her own truth. She liked women. And so Emily decided, Martin ruined my life. I might as well try to get it back. So her and Victoria started an affair, Emily and the psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And the psychiatrist taught her how to be depressed. And the psychiatrist wrote the articles about sleepwalking on Oblixa. Mm-hmm. They chose Oblixa because it was a new company. They don't really know too much about Oblixa. They just knew that one of the side effects was maybe sleepwalking. Uh-huh. And then I taught her everything about dividends and all of these things about the stock market. Mm-hmm. And we came up with this plan that I would get on Oblixa. I would get rid of Martin once he was out of prison. And through the headlines of Oblixa, Oblixa's stock would plummet and their biggest competition, Delexer, rise. would rise. And we had bet a lot of money into Delexer, and so we made millions of dollars. Same. And I'm going to get away with murder, and I'm going to leave and live my life the way it should have been. Oh my God. Holy cow. And the doctor, what is it, Banks? Yeah. It's just a and little says, sacrifice. And why me? Yeah. She says, it wasn't really you. It was just whoever opened that curtain in that hospital that day was going to be who it was. Oh. She's like, we didn't go around choosing you. We didn't hand select you. You yeah. just happened to be the one. And Allison wow. was just a good bonus. Who's Allison? The, 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 the other that patient that he had an affair with. Yeah, allegedly had an affair with. Oh my gosh. And so he shook. Uh-huh. And so he leaves and he decides to tell everyone everything's going to be okay. Uh-huh. So he tells Victoria that he just wants a part of their share and he'll go away. Mm-hmm. Right? And so then he releases... He releases Emily in front of Victoria, saying okay. that he deems her very well, you know? So he can still practice. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, he's under investigation and stuff, right? Yeah. But at this point, he can practice. And so she gets released, and the police find her, Emily, mm-hmm. and they wire her up, and they send her to Victoria's. And they said, if we get her, I mean, you can still play that whole card where you don't know what's going on. Wait, so police already know at this point. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bank already... And they want to get Victoria. Uh, and so she goes in wired up and they have a conversation about how they're gonna boat away from all of this uh-huh. and they kiss and then the police storm in wow and then they arrest victoria and now it's just emily and she's a free woman right now because she can't get arrested for the murder of martin anymore uh-huh. and so she's walking around Dang. and her alarm goes off and she says oh shoot so she walks into Dr. Banks's new office uh-huh. and she sits down because she's the patient and she's required to see him three times a week. That was the condition of the release. And he's like, well, how do you feel now? And she goes, a lot better. And he says, okay, well, today I'm going to prescribe three more drugs. And she says, I don't want to take any more drugs. Mm-hmm. And he goes, but you have to because I'm your psychiatrist and you have to come see me every day. And she goes, but I don't want to. So he goes, well, I'll see you in a couple days. Just make sure to take your pills, right? Mm -hmm. And she leaves the office, and Martin's mom is standing there. Oh, shit. And she slaps her across the face. And she walks out of the office, and as she's walking home, she turns around, and she keeps seeing police following her. And she gets arrested and put into the mental ward. So she was put in there because Dr. Banks said that she was ill and was going to harm herself or other people. And so once she's back in the psychiatric ward, he comes and visits her and says, I'm prescribing all of these drugs. And the side effects will be that you will know that everything's going on outside and you'll be miserable by yourself in here for the rest of forever. And because she's in a psychiatric ward, she can't just flush the pills. She actually has to take them. God damn. And he walks away and meets up with his wife and his son and he gets his life back. And every day the nurse knocks on Emily's door and says, How are you feeling, sweetie? Here are your pills for the day. And she looks outside the window and says, Much better. Oh. Bam. Boom. Akaboon. Damn. Adam. Adam, Dan. Adam, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. Don't fuck with, um. Psychiatrist. Yeah. And just they're just like acting. I'm gonna give you like 20 more pills because payback time, you know. So this whole time she didn't take the pill. I mean, she, she took did, it, but, but it doesn't mm-hmm. do much. Feel bad for the mom, you know. Yeah, she sure. trusted yeah. her so much. She supported yeah. her. Even helped her get the not guilty yeah, verdict. Yeah, I feel like really just a slap. Maybe a punch. Yeah. Maybe a punch. <laughs> That's oh, crazy, damn. no? That's did crazy. you guys see that coming or no? I did not. This movie is all sorts of turn and twist. Yeah. I am just... Right? And even the way they filmed it, 
when he's investigating everything, mm-hmm. you never feel like, oh, sh- he's putting the pieces together. You feel like, okay, this Mike, guy's losing yeah. his mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. Like, he's going crazy. Like, bro, chill. And then you realize he was completely right. And then you're like, Dang. what? I think it's because Emily's acting was so spot on. Oh, yeah. Nothing about it made you seem like, "Mm, she seems evil. Everything about it was like supportive, but like really sad wife. Like really just like defeated by life, but like doesn't know what else to do. It's crazy. That was good. Mm -hmm. That was good. That's it for today's video, bits. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you guys were expecting this. But also, I hear that it's not a super popular movie, even back when it was released. So if you guys have seen it or if you guys are going to watch it, let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.